The Crown Tower is a tower building that we completed down on Sydney Harbour waterfront. It creates part of the Barangaroo developments down there. Primarily a hotel and residential complex that has a large retail and resort component that creates the four-story podium at the base. Crown Tower was part of an international design competition, but what drew us to it primarily was the chance to work on such an incredible site. Sydney is an entirely unique and wonderful city in the world. That site being right on the waterfront creates challenges unlike any other. There was a very ambitious brief, there was an awful lot to fit into it, but also because of the calibre of the competition, the nature of the site, and the fact that it is in this truly unique part of Sydney, we had to deliver something that was able to stand up to that brief. The idea that was developed through the competition and actually carried on being developed after we won it was this idea of an inhabited sculpture developed initially by, by Chris Wilkinson off the back of a previous competition that he'd entered with his son and that unfortunately was never realised. But it allowed us to play with the idea of creating a very functional building that responded very geometrically to the site and also then allowed us to respond hopefully with something quite elegant and sophisticated. The intention is that the building itself rotates and twists to celebrate that view towards the Opera House and towards the bridge. The magic of the building comes where the various different components that create that geometry come together. By creating a twisting building, we almost gave ourselves an extra challenge that needed to be solved. The way we started to unpack this and really to resolve this was when, with the structural team, we managed to develop a, a helical column grid. So the columns on the building and the exterior don't run vertically, top to bottom, as you would normally expect with a tower of that size. They actually rotate with the building. So that allows us to have a very similar arrangement on each floor with the columns tracking. The facade also then tracks with that. The winter gardens and terraces that we installed in the building also track with all of that. And that allows us to create this really quite rational internal layout. So the internal architecture of the building is a lot more rational than it would seem necessarily from the external. Going back to the original idea of creating this inhabited sculpture, we really needed to create this beautiful, elegant, monolithic external appearance to the building. And that needed to be done primarily in a, a glazed facade in order to get the real quality of light and the play that you get down there. That required us to work with these incredible engineers that helped us develop a system of cold warped glass. So all of the panels are very regular, but they are installed on site and bent into place on site. It allows us to create a continuously curved external skin that really does satisfy that uh, inhabited sculpture external appearance that we were aiming for. There are some instances you'll notice on the back of the building there's a slightly different facade system. And so where the geometry was too curved, we had to switch it to a, a triangulated system because of the, uh, the curvature was too great to be able to bend it on site. But actually this creates another part of the character of the building that I, I do particularly like. And so again, with this incredible light that you have in Sydney, it just sparkles as it changes throughout the day. And that was something that we were really excited to play with. The building is located in the world's first carbon neutral precinct. The idea of sustainability has been something we've tried and we've embedded into our practices from very early on in the practices history. How do you control the solar gain on a building of this scale? More than 40% of the building is actually solid. So there's an awful lot of challenge and a great load of development in terms of creating the solar panels and the glazed panels to have the consistent external appearance so that we actually do manage to control the solar gain really quite effectively and in a passive way without having to rely entirely on um, active uh, cooling measures. The requirements for shading on this building evolved quite naturally with the client. Sydney being an incredibly bright, sunny, warm place, we always knew we were going to need very high performance shading. That coupled with the specification that we were asked to deliver by the client for internal environments meant that we really did need to work with quality shading products. 
So Guthrie Douglas have delivered projects in over 50 countries around the world. We've become the global go-to in what we do, technical engineered shading solutions. We take pride in delivering long-term solutions that are going to work for the life cycle of the building. That will often mean working with the design team to design a shading solution together with the glass to deliver facade performance. So I remember Guthrie Douglas's first involvement in the Crown Tower project. I took a phone call from sunny Sydney, from Horizo, from our Australian partners over there. And they said, uh, look, we've got this new hotel project right on Sydney Harbour. It's a bit of a challenge. No one's been able to come up with a shading solution due to the curved nature of the facade. Could you have a look at it? And so our engineers got on the case. Uh, I thought we could deliver something. And then we started talking to the design team and, and the delivery team over in Sydney and came up with a solution. So the nature of the design was that every part of the building would have a stunning view, whether that's looking over the Harbour Bridge or looking out over the uh, Sydney cityscape. But of course, with every part of the building having a view, what that also means is there's a lot of natural daylight streaming through the building. And so that was one of the things that made shading crucial to the project. And you know, whether you're coming there as a resident, you're coming to stay in the hotel or, or to visit, you have a certain expectation of what a building like that is going to feel like. And certainly as a resident in the uh, apartments, you expect everything to just work seamlessly. So by designing shading into the facade at an early stage, uh, you give yourself the opportunity not just to develop a system which is going to result in a high performance facade from an energy and sustainability point of view, but it's also going to result in an internal environment which gives you comfort, um, uh, which meets the aesthetic requirements of the design. The uh, internal environment obviously is critical because there is a hotel and it has residences as their main facilities. And so if we don't, don't manage to shade those effectively, there's a risk that it wouldn't be as successful a project as we wanted it to be. You need this incredible blackout performance, and that's a level of service that was expected as a baseline when we're working with clients like Crown. And so creating this quality of internal environments inside a building that external skin is changing, and it is warping, and there's nothing particularly parallel or consistent, it does create a particular challenge. And it is something that we knew we needed to work through from an early part of the design. So once we got into discussions with Wilkinson Air, we saw that they were designing this curved facade around the concept of three petals as a, an inhabited sculpture. Absolutely stunning uh, project and beautiful idea. And what that meant for a shading solution was, well, each window was going to be slightly different, each window was going to be curved, and there really wasn't a standard solution that was going to work for the project as a whole. The biggest challenge in terms of the brief that we were given was getting our heads around the facade, how it works and how we need to integrate it. So it wasn't just a, we need a glare blind, we need a blackout blind, we need this. It was, we need different types because of the different nature of the building. Due to ground being all glass from top to bottom and the facade uh, somewhat twisting with a lot of different angles, uh, different shaped windows, different sized windows, there just needed to be some sort of tension system installed on the facades and Guthrie Douglas products were a perfect fit for that. So there were three main challenges that we had to take into account. There was angle of the facade, so we had to attach the tension blinds to the facade, whereas a regular roller blind would have rolled down into the room too much. Uh, there was the expansion and contraction of the facade itself, so we had to make sure that gaps were left in between each system. And there was also a level of lockout that was needed within each of the apartments, so that meant that we had to incorporate tension side channels with the TESS 600 system. So again, whilst trying to keep the gap between each system, it was important to offer a level of blockout um, and also end up with a system that didn't intrude into the room too much. So it was really, getting to the crux of how do we make our systems integrate with that facade, which was the basis of the challenge, being both glare and blackout. And in this aspect, we were brought in early enough so that we could work with the design of the facade so that the side guides could integrate and flow so it all looked seamless. So the solution that we provided for the project, as with all complex facade projects, starts with the basis of our system, which is the TES 660. 
And that's at the, at the core because we know that our tension systems work and we know that we can twist it and we can put the fabric through, through angles. And then from there, we then overlaid it using our engineering team in-house. In and they then worked out how we would then abut one blind to another at the head and come up with a bracketry detail that then worked with the building. In the apartments, we primarily use the TESS 600 system, uh, but there were instances um, when we got to the point um, in each floor where we had to incorporate a TESS 660 system. It was through the knowledge of Guthrie Douglas and Horizon that we, we came to the um, end point of using that system to get the end result that we're after. So we have to then do some customization of the system to make it work so that it's integrated and that the guides fit with the mullions and that the, then the fabric runs smoothly. And that was really the essence of it. Well, for a project like this, we would create a number of different mock-ups systems for all of the different window types to demonstrate how the system's gonna work. And quite often the design team and uh, the client will want to come in and see the system working, uh, choose the different options associated with it and understand how it's gonna integrate into the project. In the case of Crown Tower, we built up several mock-up systems in our factory here in Warwick in the UK. Simple timber frames, um, but demonstrating uh, the systems and how they were going to work. And the design team came in, had a look and uh, got to know the systems, chose the different options and, and approved the, uh, the design in that way. Guthrie Douglas came over to assist with the prototypes down in Melbourne and here in Sydney, installing all the Guthrie Douglas tension systems to show the client, architects, um, that they work very good, they look good, and it was what they expected. So on a project like this, the design team is looking to minimise risk, and uh, the testing regime was quite tough. Uh, we undertook a number of different tests. We did cycle testing on the system up to 40,000 cycles, which was more than 50 years of, of typical use. We did heat testing on the fabrics to make sure they were going to perform on site in the same way they would in the factory. Uh, we looked at different cycle testing on actuators and other elements of the system. With the fabrics, with the tension systems, they have to be a certain strength so they don't stretch. So Guthrie Douglas helped out and pretty much approved which uh, fabrics that we had we're going to work with the tension systems. And that testing uh, was witnessed by the client and really just gave everybody the peace of mind that it was going to be a fit for purpose solution that wasn't just going to work for a few months or even years, but would be there for the long term. So the control of the blinds was a very specific requirement because it's a multifunction building. So the public open spaces need one set of controls and you want all of the blinds to operate together, whereas your apartments and your hotel bedrooms, they need to be isolated and they need to work individually so that a tenant can come into their apartment and they can operate their, their blinds from an iPad and they're not affecting the rest of the floor. And the same with the hotel room, somebody can go into their hotel room and they're operating their blinds so that it's isolated. You also want access to your controls for any reprogramming needs. And therefore, the controls have to be of a particular size to fit into the riser within those bedrooms. So it's all condensed, whereas in a public space or the more uh, open restaurant areas, you can put them in a riser and that serves the whole area. So you've got a bit more leeway. So between ourselves and our partner, Horizo, we've got extensive knowledge of controls. And that helped in selection of the motor because the motor goes into our system over here in the UK. So we can work between ourselves to select the right system of both control and motor because we have to have certain capabilities of torque to drive our tension blade. So the Crown Tower project was a great example of how early collaboration between design team and shading designer can lead to results that you otherwise wouldn't be able to achieve. Well, you definitely can't deliver a project in Sydney based in Warwick, and our Australian partners, Horizo, were absolutely brilliant throughout. They worked with us on the design of the system, they built up the product in their facility locally in Sydney, and ultimately they made sure that the product went into the standard that the client was expecting. The success of the project really is always down to the collaboration, and we couldn't have done it without the collaboration of Wilkes and Air. 
the designer. Uh, we could have done it without our delivery partner, Horizo. And then Climate Ready Engineering, who designed and developed the control system to actually make the things work. Without that kind of collaboration um, and the input from these fantastic consultants, it becomes very difficult to realise something quite as ambitious as the inhabited sculpture that we were intending to build. So now the building is complete and we've seen the fruition of some of these technical challenges that we've been discussing. We're incredibly proud of this building, of the design and how it sits within the wider Brangro precinct. Crown Tower is an astonishing building. I mean, you, you walk up to it and, and it's jaw-dropping. And we're just delighted to have been a part of um, such an iconic project for Sydney. So, yeah, four years on, um, we still don't get really any call-outs for any problems with the tension blinds and probably get many more years out of them. I feel very proud to have been involved in it um, and I'm very pleased with the Guthrie Douglas systems that we put in there. I know that they were the right product for this project and yeah, I think they'll get a lot of use out of them uh, for many years to come. Crown and Turner Brothers were very happy with the outcome of the project and look forward to many more projects with Guthrie Douglas. It's been fantastic for our business because it's led on to so many other projects we're working on the buildings next door, the residential apartments, and we're just in the course of delivering 50 miles in place, again with the same partners. So it's been a really fantastic thing for us. The end result we've achieved is testament to everybody involved.